Good evening, television watchers. Tonight's mask is entitled The West Warlock Time Capsule, The Tale of a Timid Taxidermist. This gives me the excuse to exhibit this prize of mine and to discuss taxidermy. I feel I know quite a bit about stuffed animals. After all, it takes one to know one. This I shot myself. You see, deer poaching is one of my hobbies. It took only two shots. The first one hit a bearded old man wearing a ridiculous red suit and riding in a sleigh. I'm having him stuffed too. It probably sounds silly to you, but I'm sentimental that way. But enough of this. Here in a moment is the West Warlock time capsule. skeleton, Mr. Tiffany. Sure is a lot more horse-sheep than this thing. Napoleon's skeleton's in a million pieces. I got no time to be putting them back together again. Besides, this is much better. We use his own skull, though. And his hooves. Are you sure you can get his skin back on him just the way he had it before? You wait till I'm through with him, Charlie. He's gonna have a Spark in his eye and a flare to his nostrils. He's gonna look just like he did when you used to ride him through the park. Oh, here's all about it in the paper. That's ah, a very nice write-up, too. Mayor accepts Napoleon Memorial. In a speech at the West Warlock City Dad's lunch at the Buckhorn Hotel today, Mayor Herbert Ayers for Molly accepted a Unicue Memorial donated to the city by George Tiffany and commemorating one of this community's most beloved citizens. So will you get me that rag over there, Charlie? Thank you. Napoleon, who died last month after a quarter of a century of faithful service. For 22 years, this petite animal was the chief attraction at Lakeside Park. Napoleon will contain within his body a hermetically sealed capsule to be opened in a hundred years. A hundred years? He lasts a hundred years, Mr. Tiffany? Oh, longer than that if they keep him in a glass case. And he's going to be beautiful, Charlie. Napoleon is going to be my masterpiece. Did you ever use an animal's own bones, Mr. Tiffany? Oh, not anymore. Just the skull and the wing bones and legs of a bird. We used to, though. Used to use the whole animal. Who did you do that? Well, we use a syringe. See that syringe there? No, the thing with the red handle? No, no, this thing. And we fill that up with formaldehyde and inject that in his veins and wherever else he needs it, and that preserves him, you see? Why don't you do it that way now? Well, just as a thought. Time for lunch. That's Mrs. Tiffany. Why don't you do it that way now, huh? And I think it's about time for you to run along home. Doesn't it last as good? Oh, sure. Lasts indefinitely. But you see, it shrinks. Pulls out of shape like a mummy. In fact, I guess that's what they were. Mummies. <laughs> you get away from that bear now. Come on. Can I come back later? Well, if you got him. Okay, I'll be here. Bye. So long, Charlie. Is that you, George? Uh huh. I've just had a letter from Waldron. Waldron? My little brother in Canada. Oh, oh. He's coming to visit us. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Well, such enthusiasm. Oh, well, now I am enthusiastic, Louise. It's just that, well, it isn't as if I knew Walden, but I think it's fine he's coming. Oh, I was just teasing. 
It'll be so wonderful to see him. The two of us are all that's left of our family. I haven't seen Waldron in... Well, it must be 25 years. Well, I think it's just fine. Is he bringing his family? Now, George, Waldron's always been a bachelor. You know that. Smart fellow. <laughs> George, you wouldn't think of giving up your chair, would you? I mean, now that Waldron's coming. Well, I mean him, I think it looks out of place. No, Louise, we've been all over that. This is the only chair I've ever had in my life that I'd really like. You ask me anything else, dear, but don't ask me that. Well, have it reupholstered? Ruin it. It's taken years of sitting to get it this way. It just fits my shape. George. I can't believe Waldron's been here for a whole week. Can you, dear? No, dear. somewhere. Oh, dear. Is there a window open, George? Oh, I'm afraid it'll make Waldron's cough worse. <coughs> it must be 84 in here, dear. Waldron couldn't possibly feel cold. It's the draft. Gets me here every time. Sorry to be such a nuisance. You're not a nuisance. You'll soon be well, and then you won't have to be so careful. We'll hope so, sis. You folks about ready to go to bed? It's just about 8.30, Waldron. Was that all? Oh, I guess you don't want to go to bed this early. <coughs> My cough medicine. Where is it? <coughs> oh, thanks. I don't know what I'd do without that cough medicine. It's all gone. Gone? I just got this bottle yesterday. I, I know. I really should try to get along without it, I suppose. I will try to get along without it. But tonight. You'll do no such thing. We can't have you coughing all night. You might injure yourself. Go and get another bottle, dear, before the drugstore closes. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I get him a bottle of gin? More alcohol in it and a lot cheaper. Waldron, you must see that there just isn't room in this house for a third person. And with Louise, uh, it's no good. Waldron, I'll give you just one hour to clear out of this house permanently. 